Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Our uh, listener support campaign continues. I do want to thank a listener who sent in a donation via our P.O. Box on a one-time basis to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913-159-13, Boise, Idaho, 83715. And I want to thank Francis for supporting the program that way. You can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month at patreon.greatdetectives.net. And thank you to Carrie for supporting the program in that way at the uh, detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. And you can join Carrie and more than 250 other Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Help to regularly support the program. You get a monthly newsletter from me, polls, uh, including and most prominently on our summer series of The Amazing World of Radio, as well as just little bonuses that uh, I think of as we go. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net to learn more. Well, now let's get into this week's episode of The Man Called X. Uh, The original air date is... March the 17th, 1951, and the title is University of Leiden. Now we present Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X, the Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by... By RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. <laughs> Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Near where the great river Rhine finally meanders home to the sea lies the ancient Dutch city of Leiden. Its quaint gabled houses and bright-colored tulip gardens surround one of the great seats of European culture, the University of Leiden. For three centuries, these cloistered halls have been a haven of quiet and dignity and peace. But now, the silence is shattered. The old stone walls echo with the angry shouts of a student meeting. I say again, fellow students, that the League of Soviet Friendship must be thrown off the campus. This dangerous minority has gone so far as to circulate the infamous Stockholm Peace Appeal here at Leiden. Leiden, the home of Johannes van Fleet, one of Holland's greatest patriots. And perhaps, perhaps the next premier of the Netherlands. I speak, I speak not only for Professor van Fleet, but also for all of us when I say... Fräulein Black, Fräulein Black. What are you doing here? If you think your junior commissars can break up this meeting, you're sadly mistaken. Here, here, take a look at this paper. We know, we know what the Stockholm petition looks like. We've all seen it before. Yeah, yeah, but not with this signature. Professor Johannes van Vliet, University of Leiden. No, no! Here's the end of that teletype report from Leiden, Ken. Four students killed, a dozen more severely injured. Police finally broke it up with tear gas. I... 
No, I just don't get it, Chief. Mm, student riots are nothing new in Europe, Ken. It's Van Fleet I can't understand. His signing that Stockholm petition is practically an open switch to the communists. Oh, you knew the old professor during the war, didn't you? Yes, and he hated injustice and oppression and intolerance. It's hard to believe he'd fall for this Stockholm fraud. Hmm. Ken, you don't think they forged his signature? Could be. They've got plenty of reason to. Van Fleet's Christian Republican Party is the most influential in the Netherlands. Sure, but... They... Suppose it falls apart. Then the radicals may be able to pull the better luck countries clear out of the Atlantic Pact. You're right. But the Bureau hasn't any authority to interfere in the internal affairs of another country. Oh, Chief, yeah, I know it. It's just that, well, Professor Van Fleet was a pretty good friend. Let's see. I'm due to leave for Manila on Tuesday. Hmm? Gives me a free weekend. Oh, now, wait a minute. Ken. So long, you... Chief. I'll send you some tulips. <laughs> There is no more Amsterdam Leiden space in the canal boat. You will have to wait till the afternoon. Uh, well, perhaps one of your other passengers will be willing to wait and resell your seat. At a profit, of course. Oh, well, it's possible, Minerve, but you'll Did have I to... hear somebody mention profits? Oh, hello, Mr. Thurston. Hey, God. Well, I was going to let you have the seats at cost. But, of course, if price is no object... <laughs> uh, surprised to see me in Amsterdam, Mr. Thurston? Not particularly. I was just passing through on my way back from Mexico City. Huh? Yeah, well, when I heard what happened to Professor Van Vliet, well... <laughs> I knew you'd be here. Sorry, not one red cent. Oh, how can you say such a thing? Especially after the way I've been saving you money. What? Well, sure. I bought this canal boat tickets for half price. Family plan. What? All right, Peyton, let's get aboard. We. Oui. I'd like to see Professor Johannes Van Fleet. Well, Go away. This is Professor Van Fleet's house, isn't it? Oui, but he does not wish to see you. He does not wish to see anyone. I see. Then please tell him Ken Thurston was here. I'll be at the Royal Orange Hotel. Monsieur Thurston. Wait. Please, I, I, I did not realize I... There have been so many people, journalists, students, politicians. Forgive me for being rude. Won't you come in? Thanks. I'm Cecile Van Fleet. Yeah, I'd heard that Johannes had married again, but I hadn't realized that you'd be so... Young? Is that what you were about to say? Well, I think attractive is the word I wanted. Who was it, my dear? Another reporter? Come in, Dr. Graumark. I want you to meet an old friend of the family. This is Ken Thurston from the United States. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard Johannes speak of you, young man. Dr. Graumark is our house guest, Ken. He's a famous historian, you know. How do you do, sir? I've read some of your work, the biography of William the Silent... Ach so? So really? Ah, they plow through me in America too, eh? <laughs> Glad to hear it. You teaching at Leiden now? I seem to recollect the flyleaf mentioned you on the faculty at Prague. Yeah, yeah. I come to Leiden to do another book. New biography? Yeah, the biography of a country. The living story of my second home, the Netherlands. You know, millions of people think the only contributions the Dutch have made to human progress are the windmill and the creation of the tulip. When, as a matter of fact, ah, uh, uh, but but I must be boring you. Oh no, I'm I'm very interested, Doctor. I'd enjoy continuing our conversation after I've paid my respects to Professor Van Vliet. Oh, oh, but my boy, uh, didn't you know uh, that uh, that's impossible? You, you see, Ken, uh, my husband is very ill. He can have no visitors. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. He must have complete rest and quiet. It wouldn't even be possible just to say hello to him? Why don't you come back in a day or so? Perhaps he'll be stronger then. Believe me, Ken, there is nothing I'd like to do quite so much as to reunite you and Johannes. 
Nothing in the world. But, but just now, it's out of the question. Welcome to the Timorese Tavern. Hi, Pagan. Forget what I'm drinking, a V&V. Oh, it's terrific. Oh, you mean a B&B? Oh, no, Mr. X, this is a V&V, a vanilla vodka. It's got the kick of a Missouri mo. Uh, my cousin Tanya in Odessa uh, always says... Thanks all the same, Pagan. Uh, I think I'll stick for a martini with an onion. Pardon me. I did not watch where I was going. Hello, Mr. Thurston. You remember me? Uh, uh, sure, sir. Uh, sit down. Thanks. You don't really recognize me. How could you? I was only 13 the last time we met. You stayed at my father's house in Rotterdam. Then you must be Kurt. Kurt Van Fleet. That's right. Kurt. The only son of the famous Professor Van Fleet. His son by his real wife. Not that cheap woman who killed him. Who what? I shouldn't have said that, should I? Kurt. Well, what's the difference? You'll find out sooner or later anyway. My lovely stepmother said my father was sick, didn't she? Well, something like that. Well, he isn't. He's dead. He's been dead ever since the night of the student riot. He died of a broken heart. She did it. She made him sign that Stockholm petition. And it killed him. You sure he wasn't killed to cover up a forgery, Kurt? No, no, there wasn't any forgery, Mr. Thurston. My father signed. I saw him with my own eyes. With my own eyes. Kurt. Kurt. What was it your stepmother knew about? What made your father sign that petition? I can't tell you. I can't tell anybody, Ev. Ev. Hello? Well, Ken, how are the windmills? Oh, ho, Chief. What's up? I uh, just thought you might like to know we've received some pretty reliable dope back here that co-designate Red Ranger is in Holland. Huh? Red Ranger? Yeah. That sounds bad. Turn up anything more on him? No, not a line. The data sheet's a complete blank. We don't know who Red Ranger is, what he looks like, whether he's young, old, man, woman, nothing. Nothing except that for the past five years, every time a country has been yanked behind the Iron Curtain... Red Ranger got there first. I wish you could get a line on him. Uh, maybe he has something to do with this Van Fleet business. Could be, Ken. Why don't you have a chat with Van Fleet? Maybe he can give you a lead. I'm afraid that'll be a little difficult, Chief. Van Fleet's dead. I don't like this place, Mr. X. So dark and spooky. <laughs> what about all these guys under the sheets? Oh, take it easy, Pega. This is the hall of the Guild of Moors. It's Leiden's Morgan undertaking establishment. Isn't that right, attendant? Yeah. The decadent remnant of a decadent society. You don't approve of the old tradition? Old traditions against the proletariat it must be destroyed. Here. Here's the one you seek. We'll take the torch and find your own way out. I've other things to do. Poor old Professor Van Fleet. A broken heart at his age. Mr. X, what are you doing? Take a look at his ear. Been stuffed with wax. So what? The type embalmers use to conceal blemishes. Yeah. But, Mr. X, where the wax was, that's a bullet hole. Yeah. Professor Van Fleet would have had a broken heart, but he died from a 38 caliber bullet in his brain. We will continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. 
Friends, if you study the room you're in right now, you'll realize that you can't buy furnishings piece by piece without the final picture in mind. It's that way when you buy television, too. Now, here's how to get the most out of your television dollar. Consider the complete home entertainment picture, radio and records, as well as TV. Instead of having many instruments scattered about, why not settle for one fine cabinet that costs less and contains your complete home entertainment needs? Such a one-cabinet combination is the RCA Victor Rutland. Open the doors of the Rutland's 18th century cabinet, and you'll find 17-inch million-proof television with its clear, steady pictures, AM and FM radio, and the Victrola 45 record changer, as well as a changer for 78 and 33 and a third speeds. Yes, so many more families are becoming television owners this week. If you're one of them... Remember to see and listen to the exciting new Rutland at your RCA Victor dealers. Now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. At the Guild of Mourners in the ancient city of Leiden, Ken Thurston has uncovered the murder of the great liberal Dutch leader, Johannes van Fleet. For several moments, he stares down at the body of his old friend without speaking. Oh, haven't we been in this morgue long enough, Mr. Rex? You know, I don't want to become a permanent guest. All right, Pedro, let's go. How are we going to find our way out? That undertaker's character blown the coop. There's a side door right here. Now, down this alley. <laughs> what a place. Nothing but corpses. Wait. Mr. X. Somebody's watching us from the roof. Huh? On this side of the building. See him up there? Oh, those are gargoyles. Huh? They're stone statues. Oh. Moving statues, eh? Moving. Pay on, get back. <laughs> you were right. There's somebody up there. Huh? That gargoyle didn't fall by itself. Come on, these stairs. But, but Mr. X, if there's somebody up there who wants to kill us, why are we going... Hey, there he goes, across the next roof. Look at the way he jumps. Just like a mountain billy goat. Huh? Hey. Hey, he disappeared. Yeah. Young fellow, red hair. Well, there's no way of catching him now. He probably knows every roof in the neighborhood. Wait a minute. Hmm? That little piece of cloth? Yeah. Stained with blood. Blood? Well, maybe he cut himself when he pushed that, uh, that, whatchamacallit, down on no, us. No, no, no. This blood is completely dry. Pagan, I think we'd better go over to the university. Do a little homework. <laughs> I, I don't like this, Mr. X. We, we shouldn't be going through the professor's desk. After all, he's, he's not alive. You've developed a sudden case of scruples, Pedro. Have I? But, but I feel all right. Let's flash that light over this way. Let's see. Uh -huh. Manuscript of the book he was working on. Uh, Mr. X, uh, there's a scratch pad here by the telephone. Anything on it? Oh, just some funny circles. You know, must have been noodling or something. Wait a minute, wait. There's something else. It, it looks like English. Let me see it. Mm. The, the sins of the sons are visited on the fathers. <laughs> In my country, we always say the other way around. Oh, well. Mm. Good evening, Fraulein. What are you doing here? Who are you? Answer me. Why not? My name is Thurston. Thurston? From America? That's right. What are you doing here tonight? I might ask you the same question. And Elmer Black, the professor's secretary. Then maybe you can help me. I've got to find Kurt Van Fleet. Kurt? Why? You've got to trust me, Wilma. Where is Kurt? Don't let him alone, Mr. Thurston. He can't stand any more trouble. Please, let him alone. Do you think the man who shot his father will let Kurt alone? Sure. His father was... We've just come from the Guild of Mourners. Professor Van Fleet was murdered. 
Oh, no. Where is Kurt? I just left him at the tavern. He was going home. Home? The Van Fleet house? No. He hasn't been staying there all week. He has a room off the square. I'll show you. Just around this corner. Only a few doors. There he is, Mr. Thurston, going up the steps. Yeah. Kurt. Kurt. Kurt, look out. <laughs> hey, hey, the guy who did it is getting away. Uh, yeah, yes, that, get away. That doesn't matter now. Let's see how Kurt is. It looks like a flesh wound. Help me get him inside. Yeah, Kurt, drink this. Thank you. But, but, Mr. Thurston, if my father was murdered, why? He'd signed the petition. Why did they kill him? Why did he sign the petition? I, 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 I don't know. I... Oh, what's the use? It was because of me. No, Kurt, no. You might as well all know the truth. My father loved me. He, he loved me so much. I, I wasn't worth it. I, I wanted to be, but I wasn't. And then this happened. What happened? There was a fight at the tavern. I had been drinking, and Red Grimmel said something that started me off. Red Grimmel? The student communist leader. Oh, go on, Kurt. I hit him, and when he fell, his head struck an end iron. He, he just laid there. I ran away. The next day, somebody told my father Grimmel was dead that I had killed him. Who told him this? His wife. Cecile? Did you hear her tell him? No. When he sent for me, he was alone. It had all been settled. He had been forced to agree to sign the peace petition to keep me from being charged with murder. Hmm? He had no choice. He, his political prestige would be destroyed in any case, and this way he would save me. This Grimmel, did he have red hair? Yeah. Kurt, he isn't dead. What? We met him a little while ago. If you could prove that. This would be a job for you, Pagan. Huh? Oh, but, Mr. Rex, I, I don't have any con contacts in Leiden. If you turned him up, it would be worth a hundred gilden. Oh, wh wh well, well, come to think of it, there's my cousin Frederick. Uh, he might be able to help. Then get going. Okay. The last room of this corridor. He went there just a few minutes ago. Good. Sure you'll be able to identify him, Wilma? Of course. I've seen him a hundred times on the campus. Here, now. Mm, I'm not. <gasps> uh, is that Grimo? Yeah. Mr. X. Uh, a knife in his back. Oh. That knife? Yes. Go on, Wilma. Um, nothing, I... Nothing. It's Kurtz, isn't it? No, no. It used to be in his room. I remember seeing it when he was a little boy. Carved handle like a mermaid. <gasps> Wilma, I want you to get to the police. Send them to the professor's house. The police? Then go back to Kurt and stay with him. He needs you. Come on, Pio. Where are we going, Mr. X? To pay a call on Red Ranger. Oh, sure, Red Ranger. Huh? <laughs> Yes, Ken, I, I remember that night very well. I saw it only yesterday when I was straightening out Kurt's things. Yeah. Cecile, why didn't you tell me Johannes was dead? Oh, we wanted to keep it a secret until after the elections. Dr. Graumark thought that... Yeah, yeah, I take the blame. I know how much politics means to Johannes. 
He tells me why he signs this petition. He is no communist. And so, when he has a heart attack... Dr. Graumark, he was murdered. <gasps> murdered? Oh, no. That shouldn't surprise you, Doctor, since you killed him. Oh, no, no, no. I was one of Johannes' oldest friends. The real Graumark was his friend. When did he discover the switch? Just before you shot him? I, I don't understand you, this, Johannes and Dr. Graumark, the famous Czech historian, were close friends, but only by correspondence. The real Graumark was a fine scholar, fine enough to know that the tulip was not created in Holland, but imported from Constantinople during the 16th century. Go on, Minher. I don't know your name, but I do know a great deal about you. Whenever a country is about to be turned into a satellite, a top agent appears. In the Bureau, your code name is Red Ranger. Very illiterate. You were sent here to force Van Vliet into the communist camp. You set up the so-called murder of Grimmel and used it to blackmail Johannes. When he realized you were a fake, he got frightened and you killed him. But how? I thought it was Johannes Hart. A stooge in the Guild of Mourners managed to cover up the bullet wound. When we got on Grimmel's track, he was murdered too. It was Kurt's knife. Sure, but you saw it here yesterday and Kurt hasn't been home since his father's death. Oh, yes. (laughs) That's just what I was thinking. You fit the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle together remarkably well. But then uh, games are an American pastime. Reality is something else. Now, if you will excuse me, there is a plane waiting to take me away from Latin. I'm afraid you'll have to miss this trip. No, I think this gun will enable me to keep my reservation. It's got a point there. And killing a notorious American agent will add to the success of my mission, Mr. X. So? Maybe you better take a look out of that window. What? Hey, cops all over out there. Police! Thank heaven. But I still have this gun. I get away. Maybe even all the way back to Russia. But when Van Vliet's murder was exposed and his loyalty re-established... What? Oh. Oh, oh no. No, no. If they find out I failed... Oh, you, you don't know them. Please, please take me prisoner yourself. Sorry. This is a matter for the Dutch government. No, no. They might send me back. Yeah, they might have that. Funny you never realized that the people you served and the hatred you spread could turn and strike you down. But it always happens. Anytime men live by destruction, they destroy themselves. All right, Pagan, call in the police. Our star, Herbert Marshall, will return in just a moment. No matter what you now take for headache relief, we urge you to try Anison for the incredibly fast relief these tablets bring the next time you're suffering from a headache. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician and in this way, discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So, the next time a headache strikes, take Anison for this wonderfully fast relief. Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. At any drug counter in handy boxes of 12 and 30. Economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. Now, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. The other folks you listened to tonight were Maria Palmer, Peggy Weber, Will Wright, Ted Von Els, Harry Bartell, and Ramsey Hill. Next week, Ken goes to Guayaquil. We get the darndest names on this show. Guayaquil, Ecuador, in a mad race against time. A beautiful girl and a man whose ideas of fun, Murder. And gummy things up as usual would be Leon Belasco as Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. The Man Called X is a Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. 
Tonight's story was written by Robert Libet and Frank Burt. All characters and incidents in this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to listen tomorrow evening for The Big Show with Tallulah Bankhead and a great parade of stars, the Sunday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And until next week, same time and station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. Tomorrow here, Tallulah's Big Show. Now it's your hit parade on NBC. Welcome back. I absolutely adored the part in the story where the man called X suggested to Pagon that he was developing a case of scruples, and Pagon said, no, no, I'm fine. And that genuinely got a chuckle from me. I like that. Now, what they do reference in uh, the episode is something that is was known as the Stockholm Appeal which was a plea against nuclear disarmament and uh, against uh, atomic war. The problem with it is that it was launched by the World Peace Council, which was essentially a Soviet-financed organization whose pro-peace advocacy was generally tinged with a lot of attacks on the West. In years to come, people who were interested in pursuing world peace and not having their credibility undermined by being seen as puppets of the Soviet Union really pushed away from the World Peace Council. And certainly some people did sign on to uh, the Stockholm Appeal, not fully understanding what the World Peace Council was. But the the Dutch political leader, who's the focus of the story, would have known full well, which would be why it would be seen as a blow. It also is kind of interesting, because uh, on radio programs and you know later television programs, they tended to make up names for things that they were portraying, as to not run into trouble for portraying real-life things and parties and people. And uh, they, you know, in Europe, they have what were known as Christian uh, Democratic parties. And in the Netherlands, Abraham Kuyper had been a key figure in the early part of the 20th century. And there was a whole tradition of different parties uh, that were called uh, Christian uh, Democrat or fell under that rubric and strain of thought. And so for the man called X, they make up a Christian Republican party. It's, it's like, okay, well, we want to name the party something. They're Democrat, Christian Democrat, we'll name them Christian Republican. That's not actually a thing or a school of philosophy in Europe. Certainly was not in 1950. But interesting things people did to walk the line. I did think that our villain at the end went a little too quickly from mustache twirling, saboteur, and spy master to sniveling. Please don't let them kill me. Please, please, please don't let them kill me. A little bit of a turn on the dime there. Now we turn to some listener comments and feedback, and uh, we have this from Francis, who writes, Adam, how are you? Thank you again for our time listening to your podcast. Uh, it is a great time listening, and we feel part of a radio community. Love Sherlock Holmes last night, 1933. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Francis. We're doing... Uh, Really good, a lot going on, a lot of irons in the fire. But we're doing okay here in Boise. I'm glad you enjoyed Sherlock Holmes, and hopefully we'll find more episodes of that. Uh, thanks so much for the comment, and thanks for the nice uh, card. It's a, it's a great bald eagle flying through a mountain area. Don't know for sure uh, which part, part it is. Maybe Yosemite... But just a really cool nature photograph. Thanks so much. And uh, we did get a message from Hart over on Patreon that I missed uh, when uh, she uh, went ahead and signed up. And Hart writes, Hi, I absolutely love your program when I was a little girl. Uh, long, long ago, I used to listen to many radio shows with my grandparents on their big radio. Thank you for commitment 
your commitment to bringing these alive. Well, thank you so much, Hart. I, I really uh, appreciate it. And it's always great to help bring back memories. All right, well, now I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to go ahead and thank Maggie. Uh, Maggie has been one of our Patreon supporters since January 2018, currently supporting the show at the Seamus level of $4 or more per month. Again, thanks so much for your support, Maggie. And if you'd like to join Maggie and more than uh, 250 other Patreon supporters, just go over to patreon.greatdetectives.net. That will do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast, I do encourage you to rate and review it wherever you download your podcast from. But join us back here tomorrow for Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons, our final previously uncirculated episode. And then coming up this Saturday, listen for Squad Room. And then, of course, we'll be back... Uh, next Wednesday with another episode of The Man Called X, and then next Thursday, Billy Swift, Boy Detective. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net, follow us over on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives, and let's not forget Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. But from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.